Hi, and welcome back. We have finally reached Dark Souls 3 in this long linguistic journey. I've kept the bonus section from my Dark Souls 2 video and dug up some exciting stuff about things other than boss names, so make sure not to skip it. Let's quickly go over the disclaimers, they remain the same. Number one, any lore theory I might have is just a theory, so take it with a grain of salt. I'm just having fun here. Number two, I am not a professional translator, I have never worked on localization. Everything in this video is just my personal opinion. I realize that localization is tough and it involves deadlines, absence of context, and other various difficulties. The transcriptions I give do not follow all academic rules, and I don't think it's necessary. They are just here to represent the pronunciation in case you're curious. All sources I use for this research will be listed in the description box below, along with all the additional information that I reference throughout the video, so you can read more if you're interested. There you will also find a link to my original blog post if you want to read it through. As usual, we'll take a look at the original boss name, then analyze the localized version and see how close it is. I'll try to come up with a more accurate version if I can. In Yudex Gundir, Hai means ash. This kanji is present in the name of the protagonist, unkindled, Hinonai Hai, literally ash without flame. Some NPCs call us ashen one, using the phrase Hai no kata, ashen person, or just Hai, ash. No particle denotes possessive relations and can make adjectives out of nouns. Thus, you can interpret this name as the one who judges ash, because that's what Gundir does, serving as a trial for ashen ones. Alternatively, you can look at it as ashen judge, which is also true, because Gundir was an ashen one in his days. The ash part was thrown out of the window, and all creative effort went into localizing Shimpansha. Apparently, the English localization decided to roll back the word judge out of stylistic concern and settled on Udex. Udex, also Judex, is a Latin word that judge originated from. I am not a native English speaker, so I don't know how obvious the connection is. A couple of Reddit threads I've read suggest that it might not be. Anyway, I'd rather they preserve the ashen part than embellish the name with a Latin word. In Word of the Boreal Valley, Tsumetai Tani is the name of the area. Honestly, I expected it to be a little bit more complicated, but it's chillingly simple. I adore the Boreal translation, it is better than just called valley and preserves all the necessary meanings. In Crystal Sage, Koro is used to denote elderly people, people of age, so sage is a great choice. For Dark Souls 3, I had to do a lot of research in religion because I was woefully ill-equipped when it came to distinguishing deacons, bishops, and other members of clergy. Came in handy later with Bloodborne, though. So, Kami means depth. Here it is used to denote a location, the deep. The word Shiko actually means bishop, a member of clergy with substantial authority. However, the localization deposed them from bishops to mere deacons. Deacons are much lower in the hierarchy than bishops. I wonder why such a decision was made. Abyss in Abyss Watchers is the same word we've seen multiple times throughout the franchise. The word Kanshisha was used in Dark Souls 2 to denote the throne watcher. I appreciate the consistency. Hao is not just lord or king, but somebody even higher than that, so High Lord is a good choice. Wolnir defeated all the rightful lords of Karthus and made his crown out of their crown, so he's the High Lord. Back to the religious titles with Pontiff Sullivan. In Japanese, the word Hou denotes Buddha, and also Pope, the Bishop of Rome, and we're more interested in the latter. Sullivan is of the highest rank in the Church of the Deep. Above him stands only Aldrich, and below him stands everybody else. It's only logical that the original uses a word that denotes the highest priest of Catholic Church. Pontiff was a right word to choose, despite the fact that pontiff technically can be used when talking about any bishop. It's associated with Pope, who is the supreme pontiff. O tells us that Sullivan occupies the highest possible position in the Church of the Deep. An impressive career path for a boy from the cold painting, don't you think? Aldridge is actually Aldridge, an ancient word dating back to Old English that means strange or unnatural, especially in a way that inspires fear. It was popularized by Lovecraft, so now people have this stable connection in their minds. Aldridge C. Lovecraft. It all fits quite well here because of the Church of the Deep, Age of the Deep Sea that Aldridge dreams of, and everything else. Unsheath all your theories about Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3. 
maybe the English localization decided not to localize him as Eldridge because it's a real word? In Yorm's name, Kojin means giant, we've been seeing this word consistently in the Dark Souls franchise, and Yomu is his proper name, very likely derived from the Scandinavian root Yorm, gigantic, that is a part of the name Jormungandr in Norse mythology. We have already covered the Boreal Valley with words, so let's move on to Odoriko. It is a noun comprised of odori, a dance, and a kanji ko that is used to denote children or young women. Both English and Japanese don't have the grammatical category of gender, but ko suggests that the dancer is a woman. It is also backed up by the lore. In Russian, every word has a grammatical gender associated with it, so for us the dancer part is feminine. In Dragon Slayer armor yet again we see the word rukari. In Dark Souls 1 this word was used to denote Ornstein, and in Dark Souls 2 to denote the old Dragon Slayer. Stellar success. In prince's names, Aniuji literally means elder prince. Here the kanji Ani is used, it means elder brother. Oji, prince, is used in both names. Lorian's name is probably derived from Laurel, a symbol of victory, royalty and such. Fits pretty well. The most popular theory suggests that Lothric's name might be derived from Loth, hatred, unwillingness, and Rick, ruler or kingdom. It would be more accurate to translate the names as Elder Prince Lorian and Prince Lothric, because in the original Lothric is not named Younger Prince, although it is implied. Anyway, I think that their proper names are far more important than these titles. Soul of Cinder is a gem 100% lost in translation. Otachi means kings. The plurality is emphasized by tachi, as in the deacons of the deep. And uh, kashin is a Buddhist term, meaning incarnation, avatar, personification. A more accurate translation would be incarnation of kings or lords. Maybe it's not as cool and romantic as soul of cinder, but it actually reflects the lore. This boss is an accumulative sum of all lords of cinder that were before. When you know the original name, you don't have questions about Gwyn's theme suddenly playing. This situation is more in line with what happened to Priscilla in Dark Souls 1. People had to guess that Soul of Cinder is somehow all lords in one when the original states it quite clearly. In Great Wood's name, Jufku is a curious word made of noroi, spell or curse, and hara, a word of many meanings including stomach and something that is inside, like intention and willpower. In Japanese there are a lot of idiomatic phrases that include this kanji, and many of them point at the fact that one's soul is actually located in one's stomach. According to the lore, this boss holds a lot of curses in its body, and its bloated lower part does look like a stomach. Curse Frotted is quite inventive when localizing Jufuku, although it misses the stomach part. Let's ignore the simple demon part and look at the more interesting stuff with the old demon king. Ro means old king, Seems to be quite obvious, but the use of ro for old instead of ko that's been used repeatedly throughout the whole franchise to denote age made me wonder. Let's quickly jump back to Dark Souls 2 and look once again at the boss with one of the simplest names, Old Iron King. It's all kind of the same, Old Iron King and Old Demon King, but the kanji for old are different, ko for the Iron King and ro for the Demon King. Why? Initia, meaning old, emphasizes the time, the antiquity, ancient times. In Dark Souls 2 it was used to denote characters who are in some way relevant to the Age of Fire, like Ancient Dragon or Old Iron King who has Gwyn's soul. They have this kanji because they are in some way connected to the ancient times. Oiro, as a verb, means to age and is widely used in many words denoting elderly or old age. As I've come to understand it, the choice of kanji here depends on what needs to be emphasized. If it is the connection to the ancient times, the Age of Fire, like in the case of Iron King, then ko is used. If the emphasis is put on the age of the character itself, then ro is used. The difference is quite small, but I love digging up such details. Makes me really excited. When I first heard The Consumed King, I thought I'd be shocked if the original name had something like consumed in it, but... Of course it doesn't. Yo is a word most curious and quite difficult to translate. We've seen the second kanji a million times in these games where everyone is a king, so let's focus on the first one. Yo, as a part of a word, generally denotes something mysterious, bewitching, supernatural. Here are some examples. Yosei, fairy or sprite. Yokai, ghost, demon, apparition. Yojutsu, 
black magic, witchcraft, sorcery. Since Osiris was a follower of Seeths and did many interesting things, including turning himself into a dragon, the word could be translated as witch king or sorcerer king. I assume that English localization invented consumed king to emphasize his obsession with Seeths teaching, ocelot, and many other things that occupied his mind. The original of his name must be Osros, the name of the Parthian king. The name itself has quite a convoluted history of meanings that goes down as far as to the Proto-Iranian language. It was a dynasty name with positive meanings attributed to it, amongst them king, ruler, or a person with good reputation. I don't know why the localization didn't localize it into Osros, it's written in Katakana as Osros, but we have what we have. In this version of Gundir's name, a U means hero. Gundir was an ashen one much like us, but unfortunately he came too late. His firekeeper had already died and the bell wouldn't toll. Champion fits nicely here. In the name of ancient wyvern, as in the case with the ancient dragon from Dark Souls 2, initiate means antiquity and refers to the ancient times. Hiru literally translates to a flying dragon. As I understand, this word is used to denote various descendants of the everlasting dragons, it is logical to differentiate between them, so wyvern is fine. Funny thing about the nameless king. In both Russian and English versions, the first phase of the fight is called King of the Storm, meaning the wyvern, and the second phase is called the nameless king. In the Japanese version, both phases are called the nameless king, and the wyvern is not mentioned at all. King of the Storm localization is quite confusing. Its Japanese name is Inishiya no Hiru, basically the ancient wyvern, same as we've just covered. Another name for it is Arashinuru, Storm Dragon. As far as I can tell, Wyvern is its species, and Storm Dragon is more of a cool nickname. The king's name is simple, it's just literally Nameless King. While I was searching here and there, trying to figure out how come I can't find King of the Storm as a legit boss in my Japanese sources, I stumbled upon a theory I've never heard before. It seems to be quite popular in the Japanese community, and I later found out that many people from the English community also support it. So, some people think that King of the Storm is actually Ornstein, who went searching for the heir of the sun who trained him, followed the path of the dragon, and became a wyvern as a result. I always find it so fascinating and cool how many theories of different degrees of viability people can build, based on the seemingly disconnected pebbles of lore scattered here and there in the Soulsborne franchise. I love it. Sister Friday has three phases and three names, so in order. Phase 1. Sudozo means none, so sister is fine, and Friday is a short form of Elfride. Phase 2. Friday is left with a name, and Ariandel is called Kyofu, meaning church father. Phase 3. In Black Flame, Hono Kanji was used in Demon Fire Sage from Dark Souls 1. There was literally nowhere to make a mistake, so stellar success. Champions Grave Tender and Grave Tender Great Wolf. That's a mouthful. Ozia means champion, especially one who won a competition, which is basically this guy's lore. Boshu is literally defender of the grave. And Dairo means big wolf. This word was used for Sif in Dark Souls 1. It's hard to understand who belongs to whom, as the Japanese original states the grave tender belongs to the champion and the great wolf belongs to the grave tender, so it should be champions, grave tender, and grave tender's great wolf. In Demon Prince, demon is just an English word written in katakana, and oji means prince, we've seen this word already. Let's look at the two demons that come before. Demon in pain is the wounded one, the one who was hurt. Wounded demon would have been better, but it's not a big deal. And in Demon from Below, the first part of the word points at some kind of depth, like a hole or a cave, and Soka means bottom. From Below is actually a really good localization, I like it. Half Light's name is really straightforward, and his proper name is literally Half Light written in Katakana. I haven't played the Ring City at all, but there was something in his name, Half Light, I could not quite put my finger on, and yet it gnawed on my mind. The kanji for Half-Light were tickling my brain until I remembered Yoyami. This was the name of the princess of Ulasil that was localized into English as Dusk. And then I thought, does this guy come from Ulasil? And yeah, his armor set and his bow heavily implicate that he is from the ancient lands of Ulasil. Nothing special about Slave Knight Gale, it's translated as is. Midir's name follows the same pattern as Aldrich's name. 
Yamikurai literally means dark eater. Success. We're all done with the boss names, so let's look at some more names and items, shall we? In Dark Souls 1, he was called Trusty Patches. His original name is really funny. The pun, apart from a metal griddle for cooking, can be a slang word that means sure thing, a certain winner, generally something that is 100% bound to happen. Here I think it has a meaning of reliable, like 100% reliable dude patches. Trusty is a great choice. The irony is so sweet. And Pachi is literally Patch, so Patches is also a great way to localize his name. In Dark Souls 3, his name is Unbreakable Patches. The word Fukutsu denotes persistence, fortitude. The first kanji is a negative prefix, and the second one means to yield, to bend, or to submit. I feel like stubborn or unbent would also fit quite nicely. I'm pretty sure that this word conveys the meaning of Patches living through multiple Soulsborne games from the very Demon Souls and still being here, still persevering. I've been quite intrigued by Pilgrim Butterflies, so I looked up the original name. Surprisingly, it's very simple. Junre means Pilgrim. The same word was used for Emerald Pilgrim, Emerald Herald, in Dark Souls 2. So it's something like Pilgrimaging Butterfly. Slightly disappointed. Ocelot's name is quite special in one regard. Its pattern is the same as the real name of the Emerald Herald, Shanalot. The end part, Lot, points at the relation to the dragons. Both Ocelot and Shanalot are, in one sense or another, children of dragons, and even Archive of the Fire describes Ocelot through his similarities to Shanalot. The first part of his name is obviously a reference to his father Osiris. It's a very popular naming pattern in Dark Souls in general. Old Wind's kid's names start with his name. Transposing Kiln is definitely worth dissecting. In its name, Renseiro, the first kanji means to temper steel. It is also present in the word alchemist that I know very well because Full Metal Alchemist is my favorite story of all time. The second kanji has a wide pool of meanings, but the general meaning is to become, to transform. These two kanji express the function of the item. With its help, you can transform something by tempering it. The word Rensei also has a meaning of training or drilling. The last kanji names the object itself, ro, meaning hearth, furnace, or kiln. The very same kanji is used to denote kiln of the first flame. Transposing kiln, 10 out of 10, awesome translation. We can't really ignore the coiled sword, can we? Rasen means spiral. This word is actually very poetic. The first kanji denotes a mollusk with a spiral shell, and the second kanji means to rotate. Coiled sword is a great translation. And we're done with Dark Souls 3. Let's see what was great. Boreal Valley, an elegant decision that conveys the ephemeral nature of the original. Curse rotted great wood. The localization successfully tied together the maximum number of meanings and conjured a decent name out of them. Also, transposing kiln, coiled sword, trusty patches, all awesome translations. However, as usual, some things were meh. For example, throwing out important stuff with Eudix Gundir. Eudix is great and all, but I'd rather see Ashen somewhere. Soul of Cinder, Consumed King, and the King of the Storm. I feel like there could be better options. And mixing up deacons and bishops, that was very confusing. So here goes the Dark Souls trilogy. There is still a lot to discuss and discover. I've barely touched the Archive of the Fire book, and I would like to peruse it for more fascinating facts. I will probably do more posts and more videos about the lore later down the line. I really liked how these turned out. Next up we have Bloodborne, also with a bonus section. Leave me a comment below if there was something unexpected you learned about any boss in this video. Don't forget to check the description for relevant links and more reading. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.